Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be doing a full three player playthrough of World's Fair 1893. In this game we are competing to be the best at helping create the actual World's Fair and we're going to do that by getting exhibits approved as well as currying the favor of rich and important people that are a part of the creation of the World's Fair. And the main way we're going to do this is by sending supporters to various regions on a board to not only get area majority bonuses, but also to collect the important cards that are going to actually give us access to those important people, as well as the plans to make these different exhibits. So without further ado, I think let's jump into the game and I will teach it as we play. Here's a starting setup for a three-player game of World's Fair 1893. We see that there are five locations on the board that were randomly distributed, and then there are two random cards associated with each at the beginning of the game. Each player takes a pile of supporters, puts that in front of them. We'll be playing the purple player and going first in this game. There's also a blue and a gold player. And lastly, each of us starts with one or two supporters out on the board. The structure of a turn is really quite simple. The first thing a player does is they take one of their supporter cubes and they put it down in one of the five regions. Then they're going to play any uh, people cards that they have in front of them from a previous round. And finally, they're going to take all of the cards that are in the associated region. What we're trying to do is take the cards that are good for us as well as put our supporters into regions that will help us out when it comes to an area majority because three times in the game, you can see down here, we're going to have a scoring and each one of these zones is going to give victory points to the players based off of how many supporters they have uh, with relation to the rest of the other supporters in those specific zones. We are the starting player, so let's go ahead and begin and I think we're going to go and put it into the red fine arts area. The first reason to do this is, well, the other two players already had a piece in there, so it kind of evens things out. But it also is going to give us these two cards here, and they're both relatively good. So now that we've placed the supporter down, we would activate any cards we have in front of us, which we don't at the moment, and then we're going to take these two cards. So the first one, and you're going to see lots of them, is the Midway Attraction Admit One Ticket. You can see quite a few of them around. Now every time one of these cards is taken, we actually push the Midway Trolley up once, the Ferris wheel is also called the midway, and this is the timer for the game. When this trolley makes it down to the bottom, that's when we'll do our first scoring, and then we'll go around again, and the second scoring, etc. So this card is going to go face up in our area, and then all of the uh, personnel cards, they go face up in your area, and they're one-time use cards that you must use on the following turn. And there are four different types, and this one we can see in the top corner, it's got a plus symbol and then the green section, which means on the next turn I must use this card to put another supporter in the green zone, uh, regardless of what zone I actually put my main supporter in. So we'll put those over here. And the final step of every turn is reseeding the board. So we're going to take three cards from the top of the deck, and we are going to put them out around the board, starting with the zone we pulled from. So we take the first one, we put it in that zone there. We take the second one and we move clockwise and we put it in the next zone over. So that goes into this zone here. And finally, this kind of skips over the bottom and gets added over here. So wow, there's actually three over here. And you may notice there are these little arrows in a uh, section. That is the maximum number of cards that that section can have. So on a future turn, we can never put a fourth card in this zone. However, this zone could take one. The blue player decides they want to put a supporter into the electricity area. Now, when they do this, they don't have any cards to spend, so now they're going to take all three of these cards, which means that the midway is going to go up three times, so it really speeds along the game, and these three are going to go into their area. Now, the reason they're doing that is, well, first of all, every one of these midway cards is worth a single point, but you will oftentimes get into the, you know, 50s or so in points at the end of the game, so one point is not that big of a deal. However, when we do each of our scorings, the person who has the most midway tickets in front of them is going to get a bonus of two extra points. So it kind of makes sense to try and be the person who has the most tickets. So we'll go ahead and put those by their area. And once again, at the end of their turn, we reseed the board by putting one in the area they pulled from and then two more going clockwise around the board. The gold player decides to influence the agriculture area, taking all three of these cards into their zone. First of all, we've got a couple of personality cards. This one is really simple. When you uh, discard this card, remember, they're going to have to use both of these cards on their next turn. They can't save them. This card is going to let them put another supporter in the zone they put the first one in, so it just doubles down the supporter. And this one will let them put another supporter in a region that is adjacent to the zone that they put that supporter down in, which is pretty nice. It's also good to know that these uh, two zones, yellow and blue, are not considered adjacent. The Ferris wheel does break that adjacency. And finally, you may have noticed they grabbed this blue card that says Viking Ship on it. 
Now, this is a proposed exhibit for the World's Fair. We're all, I guess, people trying to help the construction of the fair. So this is gonna go face up in their area, and these can become approved exhibits during the scoring round, depending on how well they do in the blue area. If they are one of the top people in influence in blue, they could turn this card right here into a blue approved exhibit tile, and these are actually worth victory points at the end of the game, whereas the blue ones are not. It's back to us, and we know that we are going to be discarding this guy over here. What's his name? Cyrus McCormick Jr., and he's going to get us an extra supporter in the green agriculture zone, which would be nice because both of our opponents have one in there, so we can kind of stay in the running over there. But looking around the board, it's just hard to say no to four different cards, especially considering we're the only ones in this zone. So if we put this down here, we will be kind of doubling down, and it'll be much less likely for other people to be able to win that zone. However, we could see this card here that we'd be grabbing would add another supporter into the gray zone on our following turn, which means we might be spending too much effort to be the most in the gray zone when nobody else is really fighting us for it. So it's a bit tough, but that would also get us two more midway tickets, which would tie us for the most with the blue player. A nice alternative plan is to instead influence the transportation zone down here, because that would get us one midway ticket, which is nice, but it would get us gray, uh, two of these gray cards which we could then turn into approved exhibits and get points for if we are one of the people in the lead in the gray zone, which we currently are, although nobody's really contesting it. But I think, oh man, this is pretty difficult. We need to decide, is anybody else gonna grab these gray cards over here? Especially if we go big on the gray zone, then nobody might, but uh, if we grab this, then we're gonna add a card here and here, then this will have four cards and you know that somebody's gonna take that. So at this point, I think it does make sense. We'll go ahead and double down over here because if we didn't do this, then somebody else would go ahead and go there and then we'd be tied for that zone and it'd be nice to have a commanding lead in the zone. So we'll place that down. Now we need to discard this guy right here who's gonna put uh, one influence down in the green zone. Thank you, Cyrus. And finally, we're gonna grab all of these cards. And the first thing we'll do is move the midway up twice because we have these two tickets here. So we've already gone halfway around for our first scoring round. And finally, we see these two here. We now have the Electric Fountains, which is a yellow card. So we have some incentive to do well in the yellow round during the first scoring in the game. The blue player cannot say no to this huge amount of cards. They're gonna go ahead and influence the transportation area. They have no special cards to activate, so they're gonna take all of these. There is a single midway in there, so it's gonna go forward one more time and they were able to get two gray and one yellow proposed exhibit. The gold player decides they are going to influence the red zone, and then they're gonna to have to use their two uh, friendly helpers here. First of all, we have Daniel Burnham, which is going to add another supporter to the zone they just supported, so they're really taking a strong lead in the red zone. And then we have George Davis, who lets them put a supporter into an adjacent area, so that would be the blue or the gray, and they decide they want to put it into the blue area because they have this blue card already over here. And now they grab all the cards in that zone. There are two midway tickets in there, so it goes forward once and then one more time, and they have a proposed green exhibit now. They are currently tied with everybody for winning green, so they have a potential for turning this into points, and uh, well, this is two more points right here, and it gets them a little bit closer into the midway race, but it's not looking likely that they're going to be winning that one. It's back to us, and we can see by this little trolley car that we're getting pretty close to the first scoring. There are two more midway tickets that are required to get us over there. Now, none of these spots have two, two midway tickets in it, but there is a possibility that we won't have another turn before the scoring happens, so we need to think ahead. Now, we know we're gonna be putting a supporter down into the gray zone this turn because, well, we don't really have a choice. That's what Charles Schwab is gonna be doing for us. But looking forward, we could go here and grab this gray card because, well, if we're gonna be winning a zone, we may as well have the right color so we can approve some exhibits. So let's go ahead and go down here, even though we don't have a strong uh, presence in the blue area right now, and that will use the Charles Schwab card and we'll take a strong commanding lead of the manufacturing zone. And then finally, we're gonna grab these two cards. And this could be nice because this guy right here would get us a support into the yellow zone. And if we don't score before our next turn, then we would drop one down over there. And we do have this yellow card. So it would be nice to be one of the scoring people for that zone, but we'll see if that actually happens for us. And you'll notice now that as we're refilling, we actually skip the electricity zone because it is full. So we put 
the second card over here, and the third card goes to the manufacturing zone. I think it's time for us to discuss how scoring works in the game now that we're just a turn or two away from the scoring happening, and it's going to dictate how these players take their turns. So we'll see that this card right here is for the three-player only game. There's different scoring methods for the two- and four-player game. And in this, we see that the first person, the first place person, who has the most supporters in a given zone, is going to get a four-point medal, and then they're going to get the ability to approve three of their exhibit cards to turn them into tiles and get points for them. The second place person will get a two victory point medal. They'll get to approve a single card. And if there is a tie for first, then they both get the two point medal and they can approve two things. And ties for second do nothing in this game. And with all that in mind, the blue player actually decides they want to initiate the scoring now. They're going to put their token down into the agriculture area and they don't have any cards that they need to use. So they're going to take all of these cards here. And we have two midway cards, which will push the card all the way to here. If he had picked up enough, more midway cards, you would still stop at this point. You would not go farther along. And this means that we will be scoring at the end of the blue player's turn. So these are going to go into their area like that. And they were able to pick up a single blue exhibit. And it's now time to score. So we can look at this handy little card to show us what we need to do. The first thing is we move the scoring marker up once to show that this first round is done. And then we score the midways. So the person who has the most midway tickets is going to get a bonus of two points. And that is the blue player because they have five and we only have three. And after they take their bonus, we see that everybody gets to redeem their tickets. So what that means is everybody's going to discard all of their midway. Oh, wow. They actually had six cards hiding in there. And they get one point for each card. So the blue player is going to get six points. We are going to get three points because we were able to pick up three of these cards. And the gold player is going to get two points because they were able to grab two of them. Next up, we move on to the scoring of areas. We see that we give out medals and we approve exhibits. We start with the left-hand uh, area from where the Ferris wheel is. So we begin with the yellow electricity zone. And we see that blue easily wins this. They're the only person there. So they're going to get a four victory point medal. And this will allow them to approve up to three yellow cards. But they only have one yellow card at the moment. So they're going to go ahead and do that. They discard this card, and they've now got one approved electricity exhibit. Moving on to agriculture, we see that blue wins this once again, so they get another four victory point medal. And in second place are gold and the us as the purple player. Unfortunately, the ties for second get nothing, so we don't get any bonuses there. And the green player has no green cards or green exhibits to get approved. So we move on to the manufacturing zone, which we easily win. We have three supporters and nobody else is in there. So we're going to get four victory points, and we have a single gray exhibit here that we can approve. Unfortunately, we wish we had more because you could do up to three, but one gets discarded. And there's our approved manufacturing exhibit. And now we keep moving along. We see that in the red zone, the gold player is winning by a healthy amount. And then the purple and blue, well, they're tied for seconds, so they get nothing. So the gold player gets four victory points, but they have no red cards, so there's nothing to approve. And finally, we go down to the blue area here, and gold wins this one as well by a much slimmer margin. So they get four more points, and they do have a blue card. So they're going to cash this one in for an approved exhibit. And the last part of our scoring phase is recalling supporters. What we do is we remove one supporter from every zone for every two supporters that everybody has in it. But you round in favor of the player. So with only one supporter, nothing is removed. But over here, the blue player is going to lose this one supporter back to their supply. We are going to lose one from this area because when you think about it, it's essentially two groups of pairs. So this one uh, rounds in our favor and this one doesn't. So we lose one there. The yeah, gold player is going to lose one and the gold player is going to lose another one here. So this kind of evens the playing field for the following scoring rounds. So after one scoring, we see that blue is in a really good position. Wow, they have 16 points, whereas the gold player has eight and we have seven and all of us were only able to approve a single exhibit. So definitely a very strong initial showing for the blue player. Let's now take a minute and discuss how these approved exhibits will score for us at the end of the game. I told you they're worth points, but how many points? Well, you could see down here, there's a little cheat sheet for it, but it's a little bit better in the rules. We could see that we're looking for sets of different colored uh, approved exhibits. So if we have just a single of an exhibit, it's worth one point, but if we have two different colored uh, approved exhibits, that's worth three points, and all the way up, so a full set of one of each of the five is gonna be worth 15 points, and you can get multiple sets. So you might have a full set of five to get 15, and then have a set of three, and then if you have a whole bunch of one color, you're essentially making lots of single sets to get one point each, so I hope that makes sense. It's now the gold player's turn, and they have decided they are going to influence 
the manufacturing zone. They have no cards to spend at the moment, so they're going to go ahead and take all of these. There are no midways in here, but there is a new person we haven't seen before. This is Bertha Palmer. She has a very powerful ability that lets you move any one supporter from one spot on the board to another. It doesn't have to be your supporter. It could be an opponent, so that's quite powerful. And then they got another Daniel Burnham, which will let them put two supporters down in a spot instead of one, so that's pretty good. Also, they got a red uh, proposed exhibit, and they're already pretty strong in red. So all in all, that's a very good take for the gold player. It's back to us, and man, we are not doing too great in this game so far. Definitely not as strong showing. The round, the scoring round happened just a little bit too early. It would have been really nice to have been able to use this guy to get an extra um, influence down into the electricity zone, but that didn't happen. So we need to think about where we want to go from here. Now, we know we are going to be putting a supporter down into yellow this turn. We don't have a choice on that. And we also know we got one gray approved exhibit, so we're looking for non-gray exhibits because you get more points for the variety of uh, approved exhibits that you have in your area. And looking out here, there are a couple kind of good options. There is the yellow zone here. We know we're already going to be putting one in here, but there are two blues and a midway ticket. And as you can see, the midway can get you a fair amount of points if you're able to get a bunch of them. But right now, we're not terribly strong in the blue zone, but having these cards are not. It's not a bad thing. Uh, however, if we went over here, we would tie for first place and take two green cards as well as a yellow card. And if we do really well in yellow later on, which we might do because we're dropping an extra cube down in there, well, then we'd have two yellow cards. If we won it, we could get a bunch of exhibits approved and that would give us greens and maybe we'll try to focus on greens and get those going as well, especially considering we could see that there is a strong card over there, but there's only one card over there. So I think for the moment, given all these different options, we could also go down here. Now, this is a nice synergy because you're supporting a region and also taking a card of that color. Oh, and getting this lady who's really strong and being able to manipulate stuff. Maybe this is actually our better move. You know what, let's go ahead and do that. I kind of talked myself out of it. It's always nice being able to support a region and take a card of that color. So now we're going to use the uh, George Westinghouse, which is gonna give us a influence in the electricity area. Discard that card. And finally, we'll go ahead and grab these. I think this is gonna work out really well for us because it's very powerful being able to move cubes around on the board. It's the blue player's turn, and they've decided they're going to influence the manufacturing zone, probably because they already have two of these gray cards in their area. They want to turn into approved exhibits. They have not, no cards to spend, so then they're going to go ahead and take both of these. This is the first midway ticket of the new round, so we'll move this up to there. And we have another George Davis, which lets you put a cube down in adjacent zone on his following turn. The gold player has decided they're going to influence the agriculture zone over here. And now they have to use both of their influential figures. So Daniel Burnham is simply going to put a, another one of these influences down into the agriculture zone. And then he is discarded. And then Bertha Palmer lets the player move a cube around. And they're actually going to move their own cube. They're going to take it from this manufacturing zone over here. And they are going to put it down into the red fine arts area. So now they're doing really well in both red and green. And they already have red and green cards. And now that they've spent those two cards, they're going to grab all of these, which gets them another green card, so that works really well in their favor. We've got one midway ticket, so this goes up by one, and they get yet another Birth of Palmer, so they can continue to move cubes around on the board, which is always a good thing for you to be able to do. It's back to us, and I think we have a pretty good play available to us. If we go ahead and influence the electricity yellow zone here, it puts us in the lead, which is pretty nice. And then we have a Bertha Palmer, and we know we're about to grab a couple more blues. We already have a single blue. We're doing well in electricity land, but we're not doing great in the blue area. So I think what we should do is grab a supporter of our own that we don't think is going to do very much for us. And looking around here, well, first of all, I don't know how much we care about winning the gray zone. It is nice to get points, but we're not actively hunting out gray cards, whereas we can potentially jump to second place easily in either of these two zones if we get one of those color cards. So let's go ahead and take this supporter here and move them down to there. So we have a much stronger position in the blue area. We go ahead and discard Bertha, and then we get to get all of these cards here, which is really quite nice. We get a midway ticket, so this goes up by one, and now we have three of these blue cards, so we're very vested in trying to be first place in the blue area because it would be great to turn all three of these into approved exhibits. The blue player has decided they are going to influence the manufacturing zone, and then they have George Davis here, which lets them put a supporter down in an adjacent area. They're going to go ahead and take their supporter here, and considering they're about to grab a green card, they're going to throw the extra supporter down into the green agricultural zone. 
And then they'll grab all of these cards here. We've got one midway ticket, so we go up one more. They are currently in the lead with two tickets versus the one of each of us, so it's a much tighter situation with those at the moment. They've got another pending exhibit, and they've got this guy, which will let them put an influence down in the blue zone on their next turn. So that's pretty good for them because they already have a blue card. The gold player is going to influence the blue transportation area, and now they have to use their Bertha Palmer card, and they're actually going to go ahead and take the one they just placed down, and they're going to swing it over to the manufacturing zone, which they pulled out of earlier, but hey, this kind of makes sense for them at the moment. Uh, these Bertha Palmer cards are very powerful for moving other people's cubes around when you're close to scoring, but right now we're so far away, it makes more sense to put yourself in better position, I think. So that card gets discarded, and then they're going to take all of these, which puts them in the lead on the midway race, which is good for them. So there are two tickets in here, so we go forward twice, and then that gets them another blue card, and then a gray penning exhibit. It's back to us, and the way I see it, we have two different options. We can influence the yellow electricity zone, because that would get us a midway ticket, which is nice. Right now, the gold player is winning with three, and we only have one. But we would also get, first of all, we'd influence the zone, so we'd be stronger, and we do have a yellow card here, but we only have one of them. And we would get a red and a gray, and at that point, that'd be our first red, and on the next turn, we could potentially go down over here and grab this yellow card, which is good because we'll be strong in the yellow. Or we could do this first and go after that later. So it's kind of a vice versa. If we influence this first, it's a little weird because we don't actually have any red cards at this point in the game, and somebody else might take that before we have a chance to grab it. And this has a midway ticket, so I think given both of these options, um, also this is two green cards, which is nice, but we aren't even close to second. And Well, we're, we're close to tying in second, but not in a good position for actually approving green exhibit. So let's go ahead and do this. I've talked myself into going into the yellow area. We don't have any cards to spend, so we're going to go ahead and grab these ones right here. The midway goes forward once, and then we get two more pending exhibits. And both of these are new colors to us, which is pretty good. Well, I guess new colors to us at the moment. We already have a manufacturing one, so that's less good, but having a variety of cards is a good thing so you can opportunistically maybe jump into second place somewhere and approve something to get a bunch of points. The blue player doesn't have to think too long about this turn. They're going to go ahead and put a supporter right down into the green area. Then they're going to spend the George Pullman card, which is going to put an extra supporter down in the blue transportation area. And then they're going to grab all four of these cards because, well, they're all pretty good for them. First of all, we have Daniel Burnham, which lets you double down, which is really good for just taking over an area. But then they have three different color cards here. This is going to be their third gray card, and they are hoping to win gray so they can approve three in a row, which would be good. It's their second blue card, and that isn't as good for them because they are in second place on that. And then they get a yellow card, and they're in second place with that as well. So they're in a good position to approve a bunch of cards at the next scoring round. The gold player doesn't look like they love all their options too much, but they're going to place down here in the manufacturing area. They have no cards to immediately spend, so they're going to grab all of these here. There's a single midway ticket, so it goes forward once, so that's pretty good for them. They are continuing their lead with four tickets to the two of both of us, and this is going to be their third green card, which was good earlier in the game. However, at the moment, they're tied for first place with the blue player that kind of came out of nowhere, and then a yellow card, and they're not even in the yellow area, so that was maybe not the strongest turn for them. It's back to us, and we currently don't have any special ability people. That would be nice to have, so looking at the board, it still seems like it's a strong decision, to go into the red zone, which was the opposite of the our choices from the last turn. In fact, they kind of go together because we grab that one red card, and that would put us in second so we could approve the red card, which would be good for getting a diversity of approved exhibits. It would get us an additional yellow card, and we're looking in a pretty good position to win the yellow area, so that'd be more yellow approved exhibits, but it does give us a couple greens, which we are nowhere near doing anything with green at this point. But looking at the board, the other options aren't that great. We could go over here, which it's almost a waste of a cube because when the scoring happens, we're going to lose even more of these cubes. We kind of want to stay at three instead of going to four. And then looking over here, while well, we're already winning this really well, we would get this extra guy who's pretty good. This yellow would synergize well with that over there and would get us a midway. This is a viable alternative, but at the end of the day, being in second for red is a pretty good thing because, well, when we go into this area, these cards are going to get wiped and the only other person who has reds they might want to do something with is a gold player down here, and they're probably not going to want to spend energy doing that with uh, very little cards over here. So I think 
all things considered, let's go ahead and do this. Gonna grab all these cards here and add them into our area. We have a lot of cards. We need to do a bunch of approving to get rid of some of these and actually get points for them. It's the blue player's turn and they've decided they are going to influence the transportation area. There's just really good cards here, especially that last one that came in at the end. Oh, but before we take these cards, they need to spend this Daniel Burnham and this really is backfiring for us. We didn't really anticipate them going over there. They, it really got incentivized by having this last card drop. So that goes there. They've now jumped ahead of us in winning the blue area. So it's gonna be harder for us to get rid of all these cards. This card gets discarded. And then all these go into the blue player's zone. So they have two of these special guys here. And they have a midway, so it goes forward once. We're just two ticks away from the next scoring in the game. And then finally, they get another yellow uh, unapproved exhibit. The gold player is going to support the green agricultural area here. They don't have any cards to spend, so they're going to grab these two. So on their next turn, they're actually going to put another supporter into the green zone. That might be good for them, depending on how the scorings happen. And this gets them another green, which is definitely good for them because they are currently winning the green area. So let's go ahead and organize these cards a little better. And that was the end of their turn. Now let's get some cards out. It's now our turn, and we have a couple different options. The first of which is somewhat obvious. We could go into the red zone here, take these two midway tickets, and cause the scoring to happen at the end of our turn. In that case, we would have four tickets, and yellow would have four tickets. It's a friendly tie, so not only is that two points here, but it would be an extra two points for having for sharing the most of those tickets. But another option is we could go to manufacturing and be in tied uh, for the first place and grab all these cards here. The midway would only go forward once, but we get both of these, which are really strong for supplementing uh, your supporter presence on the board, and it's a little weak for us in uh, a couple of these areas. And also we could go down here and tie for um, second for first place with blue, and that would allow us, right now we're in second place, to approve one thing. We could then approve two of our three, but all things considered, it seems to be really important to stay in charge of the uh, scoring. So I think we're gonna go ahead and place down here. We're gonna grab these two midway tickets, which is gonna push this forward and add those into our area. And now we are going to have a scoring on our turn before the blue player could do even more stuff. We are now doing the round two scoring, so we'll move that forward to show that the round is over. And now we can see that both purple us and the gold player have the most of the midway tickets. So we're each gonna get a $2 bonus. And then everybody is gonna cash out all the midway tickets to get one point for each. So we are gonna get four points. Blue is going to get three points. And gold is going to get four points. Next up, let's score each of the zones, starting with the yellow electricity zone. We see that we are winning that with three supporters to the one of blue. So that's gonna get us a four point ribbon over there. And we can now approve up to three of the yellow exhibits. And we have two of them. So we're gonna discard both of these and get two approved tokens. And of course, the blue player was in second place, so they are able to get a two point medallion and they can approve a single thing. So they're gonna go ahead and get their two points and then one of these yellows gets discarded. And now we move on to the green area. We see that gold wins this really easily. So, well actually, not easily. I guess it's only one part away. We were just not in contention at all. So gold is gonna get a four point token and then blue is going to get a two point token. Gold is able to cash in up to three green uh, uh, exhibits. So they have three of them right here. They're gonna go ahead and discard all three of these. And this will give them three approved exhibits. And then the blue player is able to discard the single one that they had to turn into one. In the manufacturing area, there is a tie for first. So that means they both get two points and they can approve up to two exhibits. And we can see that the blue player does actually have three of them, so they're gonna discard these two to get two approved exhibits into their area. And the gold player has a single one, so they're gonna get one approved exhibit. We now score red, and there's a tie between us and the gold player, so each of us is gonna get a two-point ribbon into our scoring areas, and then we can each approve up to two of these red exhibits. We only have a single one, so let's go ahead and bring these over here. So we're gonna discard this, to get a single one, and then the uh, gold player has three of them. They're able to only discard two of theirs to get two approved exhibits into their area. And lastly, in the blue zone, the blue player was able to win it, so they are gonna get four victory points, and we are gonna get two victory points for being in second place, 
And then the blue player can get rid of up to three blue cards. They have two of them, so they're going to discard both of these. And that gives them two approval tokens. And then we can discard a single one of our blues in order to get one approved token. Next up, we have to recall workers from the board. So this guy goes back to the board. Gold is actually going to lose two over here. Blue is only going to lose one. Both gold and blue are going to lose one from the manufacturing zone. Gold and purple lose one from there. And then blue loses two, and we lose one from the transportation zone. At this point, we move into the third and final round of the game. But give me a second. I'm going to clean up this messy area a little bit. All right, I've moved each player's victory points off to the side of the camera. You'll see them when the game is over. Uh, just know that blue currently appears to have more victory points than the rest of us, and unfortunately we appear to be uh, not in the lead. And when you look at the approved exhibits, you can tell the set's much clearer now. We all have a set of four, none of us have a, has a set of five, and we are definitely lagging behind. We have the least number of approved exhibits uh, based off of um, just looking at the number that we've all done. The blue player is definitely doing the best as far as getting points, although the gold player has the option of making even more sets and uh, getting more points out of these. So let's now jump into the final round of the game with the blue player. And the blue player decides they are going to support the agriculture area, and then they need to put another supporter into that zone because of Daniel Burnham here, and they now get to put a supporter adjacent to the agricultural zone. Now, both of these are somewhat good for them because, well, they're not winning either, and they have a gray and a yellow already in hand. But over here, over here, it's an even playing field, so they could get out ahead, or here they could just chase us. I think getting out ahead is probably a little more proactive, so they're going to go ahead and put their cube down there, and then they're going to grab these two and add them to their area. The goal player decides they want to influence the electricity zone. They haven't been in there at all this entire game, and, well, you could see that they, it would be really good for them to get some yellow support in their area, uh, get some approved exhibits. So they're going to go ahead and put that down there. They've got Cyrus McCormick Jr., so that means they are going to put another influence in green, although they're just trying to play catch up at this point with that zone. And then they're going to take all of these, so that's pretty good because it gives them another yellow. There is a midway, so the midway goes up by one. And then they also have yet another uh, person that they get to spend on the next turn, and they are very powerful. So it's back to us, and I think this is somewhat obvious for our position. I think we're going to want to influence the gray area. This is a really strong set of cards here. We don't really care about winning gray so much. I mean, we do have a gray card in our hand, so approving it would not be a terrible thing. But getting both of these guys down, which will let us put three support down on the next turn, one in red, one in blue, and one wherever we want to, is just a really big deal. And then a midway ticket, that's not bad as well. So let's go ahead and do all of that so the midway goes up by one and then we're gonna sort the stuff into our area. The blue player wants to be in the running on the red area when we do our final scoring so they can actually cash this card out. So they're gonna go over here, they have no cards to spend, so they're gonna grab all of these and grabbing two midway tickets is pretty good as well because that puts them currently in the lead for those. The gold player cannot say no to these four cards, especially two of these personality cards. So they're going to go ahead and influence this area, and then they need to spend uh, George Davis right here. So that means they influence an adjacent area, but there's only one adjacent area to blue, so they have to throw this one over here on the red, which is not bad for them because they actually have a red card. That works pretty well into their favor, and now they're going to grab all of these. There was a single midway in there, so that moves forward, and that is the end of their turn. When you get to the point where you have dealt out the entire deck, these are the last three in the deck, then you are going to grab the rather large discard pile that's going to have quite a few uh, people and midway cards in it, shuffle this up, and get a new uh, draw deck for the future rounds. It's our turn again, and I think that we are going to want to influence the agriculture area. We're pretty far behind over here, it's true, but these are very strong cards. And, well, we do have green, so if we could somehow get to the point, uh, maybe by moving cubes around, that we could score these, that would be worth five points to us. It's the last thing we need to make a complete set. So we're going to go ahead and drop that down, and then we're going to need to spend both of these cards. So that means we're going to put an influence down in the red zone, which ties us first, and in the blue zone, which puts us into first. So that was a pretty solid turn. And now, of course, we grab these cards over here, and that gives us our third blue, and it also gives us a couple very potent people on the next turn. Getting a yellow down here, well, that's not terribly important, but man, 
this lady is so good at controlling the uh, scoring tempo and positioning of the game. The blue player is going to influence the electricity yellow area. They don't have any personality cards to use, so they're going to grab all three of these, and that gets them uh, Augustus St. Gauden, which will let them put an extra red influence down over here, which is really good for them because they're trying to get that final red uh, exhibit approved. After a bunch of thinking, the gold player decides they're actually going to influence the electricity area down here. Uh, they were really tempted to go over here and grab these midways, but ultimately that would mean they'd be dropping three support cubes down this zone, which they don't actually want to support that much. These cards are good, but they are thinking about board presence a little bit more. So they're going to go over here, and now they're going to use both of these guys. So the first one puts an extra support in that zone, which is really good for them because that is their missing puzzle for getting a full set over here. And then this guy, uh, Charles Schwab, he is going to put one more support into the gray area. And finally, the gold player takes George Westinghouse, which increases his strength in the yellow zone even more on the next turn. So that's not bad for really making sure that he's going to get the uh, maximum uh, set of five from their approved exhibits over here. It's back to us in considering our big fight is trying to prove some of these green uh, attractions. This is a pretty good situation. If we go into the green agriculture area, we are going to grab this for our next turn to further um, bolster our position in that zone. So let's go ahead and do that. But then we have both of these people to evaluate. So the first one is just going to put a single support down in the yellow area. So we're once again tied for first, which is okay. I mean, we don't have any uh, cards we want to approve, but, you know, winning does get you victory points, and victory points are good, so this guy is gone. And then Bertha Palmer lets us move one cube from one place to somewhere else, and I think, considering we're fighting really hard for this green area right now, we want to move this cube to not that area, because now, suddenly, we are in first place in this area, we're tied for first, and we'll even jump ahead if nobody else goes over here by playing this card on the next round. So now we need to think where we want to put this uh, blue cube down. And I think the place that damages us the least and helps blue out the least as well is right here. It also makes things a little more complicated for yellow. So all things being considered, I think that was our best move, although it was a little tight because we are doing somewhat well. It's a very even board as far as uh, nobody's really dominating any zones. There's tons of ties. And then let's go ahead and grab our cards. There is a single midway, so it goes forward. We're now kind of approaching the downward slope of the last part of our round. And then we're going to get this guy for the next turn, and that gets us our second midway card, so we are currently tied also for that. All players have two midway cards. The blue player has decided they are going to influence the manufacturing zone over here, and then Augustus St. Gauden is going to influence the red area, so we're once again tied over there too. This is kind of crazy. There's three of each here, here, and here. It's rather surprising, so this gets discarded, and now they're going to grab all of these cards, which is just a good chunk of stuff. That's two midway cards, so it goes one, two, so now getting quite close to the end there, and it puts the um, the blue player in a solid lead when it comes to that. This is their third blue exhibit card, which is probably not going to help them out much because, honestly, they're not in a position to really win this. Well, you know what? We'll see how the game pans out. And then finally, they have one George Davis, which lets you put a cube down to an adjacent area, which is quite good. The gold player decides to influence the red fine arts area, and then they're going to use their George Westinghouse to also influence the electricity area now. So that puts them in first place in both of those zones. And then they're going to grab all of these cards here. So on their following turn, if they get a following turn, which seems likely, they are going to influence the green area as well, which would allow them to get that done in their area. So this is a pretty good turn for them. It's back to us, and the game is getting late. There's only three more midway tickets to end the game. And so we could think short run or medium run a little bit. Essentially, is this going to be my last turn, or am I going to get two more turns? If this is my last turn, then I probably want to go over here, even though I'm going to drop another cube in that area anyway, because, well, first of all, I would probably be pushing the end game condition on a little bit, and it would ensure that we would be able to get first place in this area, because if it got down to the gold player, they're going to be dropping another one into the green area, and then we would tie and lose two points. If we wanted to play a little more long-term, we could go down into the blue area and grab this set with Bertha Palmer, which is really good at moving cubes around the board. I just realized she's kind of falling off the board there. You can see her well. And But at the same time, if I'm going to get a second turn, 
having this guy to be able to drop two cubes anywhere I want means I pretty much guarantee to win whatever zone that is if I, if I care about it. So you know what? Let's go ahead and go with the original plan. So we'll put that down there. This card is going to get burned, so we're going to put another one on there as well. And then we're going to take both of these. The midway goes forward once. We have three midway tickets. It's not enough to actually be in the lead, but it's not the worst thing. Revealing this midway card here is what my fear was. I figured there are a bunch of midway cards in this deck right now, just the way the discard mechanic works. And if this doubled up, I knew that one of these two players was going to grab it and I wouldn't get another turn. But uh, now that it's the blue player's turn, well, in general, it's a good idea. If you can end the game and have no other players take any turns, it's probably a good idea to be in control and have um, the game end on your turn so nobody else gets actions. And this kind of plays in the, the blue player's favor anyway because they're fighting really hard to be able to approve stuff in the red zone. And right now they're tied for second, so they can't do anything. By going right here, they are now tied for first, and they can actually approve two reds, which is very good for them. And they have this card here, which lets them influence a zone uh, adjacent to this area. And if they put it down here, now they are tied for first here as well. So that's another two points for them. And they could also, well, I guess they don't, oh no, they do have a blue card. So that was all in all a very good turn and uh, rather unfortunate that the second midway card came out, even though it was pretty likely to do so. So to end the blue player's turn, we have these two midway tickets. We go forward here, and this means this is the last turn of the game. We're going to go into the final scoring, and then we'll see who has the most points. So these go over here, and let's start scoring. The blue player has six midway tickets, so they definitely have the most. So they're going to get a two-point bonus for having that, and then they're going to get six points when they cash in these six cards. Next up, we have three midway cards, so we're going to discard these and get one point each. And lastly, the gold player down here has two of these, so they're going to get two points. And now let's start scoring the regions. We start with the yellow zone. We see the gold player was able to get in the lead over there, so they are going to win it. They get a four-point medal. And then there is a tie for second, so nobody gets any points for being tied for second. And the yellow player is able, the gold player is able to cash in up to three of these yellow cards. And fortunately for them, they have those three cards, so these get discarded. And these get added into their sets of approved exhibits. They now have one full set. Next up is the agricultural area. We were able to win this, and there's a tie for second, so nobody gets the second place bonuses there. So that is four points for us, and we can now approve up to three green uh, projects. And we've got two of them in our hands, so we'll discard these. And we now have one complete set. In manufacturing, the blue player was able to just barely get into first, and there's a tie for second. So once again, nobody gets bonuses for a second. So blue gets four points, and then they can approve up to three of their grays in their hand. They have two of them, which means they have four approved gray exhibits now, quite a few. Next up, we have the red zone, and the gold and blue players were able to tie for first there, which means they are both going to get two points, and they can both approve up to two exhibits. The blue player had three exhibits in their hand, so they're going to discard two of them, and they now also have one completed set. And the gold player only has one red card, so they'll discard that and add this one into their area. And lastly, we have the blue transportation zone, where purple and blue tied for first, so we're each going to get two victory points, and each of us can approve up to two things from our hand. We had three, so we'll discard two of them. And the blue player had only a single one in their hand, so we'll discard that. And that finishes the scoring round. We don't need to take cubes off the board because that has no relevance to the end of the game. Here we have everything that was gained by all the players throughout the game. We have the approved exhibits in their sets. We've got the medals for being first and second place in various zones on the board. And finally, all of the midway coins that we were able to grab. Now, the medals and the coins are worth victory points equal to the number on them. But then, remember, you get points for the various sets of these approved exhibits. And you can see up here to see that. So all three of us were able to get one set of five. So that's 50 points all the way across the top for all of us. But then we see the blue player has one set of four, which is worth 10 points, whereas we have one set of three, and the yellow player, or gold player, has two sets of three, each of those being worth six points, and then finally the set of two is worth only three points, and well, really finally we only have these little singletons here at one point each. So we're going to go ahead and add all this up together and see who was the winner, although it's pretty obvious it was the blue player, and see maybe just by how much we lost the game by. So we ended the game with 52 points. The yellow player ended with 59, and the blue player dominated us with 74 points. So that concludes the full three-player game of World's Fair 1893. 
we can tell that making these sets is important. However, the blue player got 29 points in their sets and the gold player had 27 points. So a subtle difference between the two, but the real difference happened down here. We see they both won four regions. The blue player was a little bit better at doing second places, but man, the midway was the thing that really won the game for the blue player. They got way more points for taking those midway cards off the board and then also for being in the majority a couple times when the scorings happened. I hope you enjoyed this full playthrough, and if you'd like to see my impressions on the game, I recently discussed it a little bit in my last vlog, and you can see a link to that up in the top corner as well as down in the description. Also, if I end up doing a review for this game in the future, there will be a link in both of those spots for that as well. If you'd like to see more uh, full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so directly by visiting patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.